Okay, let's talk about the metamorphic rocks. I'm just going to do one big video for all these rocks because I don't have this many of them, at least for this summer class uh, that I'm currently teaching. Uh, and so here they all are right here. Anthracitic coal or anthracite coal, quartzite, marble, slate, phyllite, schist, and gneiss. So on the bottom row here, I have the foliated uh, metamorphic rocks. And then at the top here, I have the non-foliated ones. So hopefully by now you've watched the, uh, the lecture video I have on metamorphic rocks. And we talk about what the texture and composition is of metamorphic rocks. And so that's basically what I've broken these up into. The foliated ones are basically the ones that have a texture. And then we classify these non-foliated ones based solely on their, uh, their composition, which is really just their, their mineralogy. Um, and I'll kind of start with the, uh, the foliated ones. And so I've got them in their sort of degrees of foliation, right? They've experienced more metamorphism as you go from this side to this side. So this first one is slate. Uh, its parent rock is shale. Uh, it's not hard to imagine. This actually looks like a piece of shale. Do I have shale? Yeah. So here's my big piece of shale. Uh, which you can see is crumbling. However, this piece of slate is is not crumbling. It's even though it looks like I should be able to break. I mean, if I bent that hard enough, it'd probably break. Uh, let's see if I can do it, dude. Wow. Well, see, this is why you make uh, you make uh, shingles, roof shingles out of this. I can't even break off a thin, thin piece of that. I can break that whole piece of shale in half, probably with one hand. Um, so it just goes to show you how metamorphosed this has become. Even though it kind of looks like shale, it is very, very hard. And it is a metamorphic rock. So, not many minerals recrystallizing in this quite yet. At least not that I can really see with my naked eye. If we give it a little bit more heat and pressure, it'll eventually turn into this. Which is called phyllite. With a PH. Phyllite. And you notice it's a little bit shimmery. It's, it's similar to the slate. Uh, it's probably a little bit easier to break. Uh, but the minerals in here have started to get larger, have started to recrystallize more, and the kind of shimmeriness you see is the uh, the micas, kind of like muscovite, that are uh, that are growing within this metamorphic rock. Uh, continuing down the series, we have a schist, and a schist you can straight up see the pieces of mica that are growing on this. I can probably get them to flake off a little bit. Uh, they're they're much larger. It's much more sort of not just shimmery anymore, but almost kind of sparkly. You see that sort of difference in the schist? Get it even closer. So this is almost like a phyllite. It's almost like a shiny slate. Uh, and then schist uh, gets much more flashy and, and shiny, much more lustrous. Uh, and also a little bit easier to break. Sometimes in schist, you will see more than just the... Uh, the micas that are in here, this is mostly just muscovite and biotite, but a lot of times in a schist you'll see little garnet crystals that start to uh, crystallize out of it. So that is that is schist. And again, in the real world, you can get rocks that are kind of between this. You can get a phyllite that's even shiny, a little bit more shiny, uh, and gets close to a schist, and you can get a schist that's somewhere in between. We have rocks in the classroom that are like this, where you can have fun arguing over whether you think it's a, a phyllite or a... Uh, uh, a schist, or even a slate. Here's another metamorphic rock I have. What would you call this? Based off looking at these these three, anyway, we'll ignore this one for now, but looking at these three, which one do you think it would be? So, definitely not the schist, right? It's not that super flashiness, but is it more towards phyllite, or is it more towards slate? I'd probably call it a phyllite. In fact, this is almost a completely different metamorphic rock called a hornfels. Uh, but there's a little bit of foliation here. And hornfels aren't foliated. But there's a little bit of kind of that layering going on here. So this probably would take the title of a phyllite. Even though it's not quite as shiny as that one. So anyway. So, slate, phyllite, schist. And here we have a nice. Nice actually looks quite a bit like granite. But it's got that foliation. You can see those lines... Uh, going through there, I'm going to use my, let's see, I have a screwdriver, let's use that. You can see these lines kind of going through it. You can see that, that foliation, you can kind of see the quartz and the feldspars in there, and there's the darker minerals uh, that exist. So, 
this is kind of your your not quite your highest uh, metamorphosed rock. There is a migmatite after this, which looks a lot like nice. Uh, but a migmatite, you're you're getting close to actually remelting these things and getting yourself back into magma, and then eventually an igneous rock. But uh, so that is a nice. I encourage you guys to kind of Google these things, see what they actually look like. Look in your lab books, see what the pictures are in your lab books. Don't just rely on on these things that I'm showing you. Uh, and of course, look at what you have in your lab kit. Now, your lab kit doesn't have all of these. I don't believe there's a... Well, what is in your lab kit? I can't remember if these two are in your lab kit or not. I'm pretty sure there's no schist, because schist breaks apart way too easily. But there is a slate, and there is a nice. I remember breaking those myself. So, those are the foliated ones I want you to learn. I remember the foliated ones are the result of regional metamorphism, right? Differential pressure from two tectonic plates colliding. And these guys are our non-foliated metamorphic rocks. Uh, and you know what? I'll make a separate video for those.